Hey there guys and welcome back to the channel. So I made this video because I see a lot of people dispose their electronic waste. Most people don't know that even damaged electronics are valuable. Salvaging from old electronics don't only save your money but also your time. So in this video I'm going to be salvaging free electronic components from this old electronic waste. And so if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button because in our next video we're going to be building awesome gadgets from this old electronic waste. So hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Alright, so while I'm digging into this old boards and chargers, let me just talk you through why I love doing this. A lot of people see broken gadgets and think it's trash, but honestly, I see opportunity every single time. There's so much useful stuff inside old electronics, you just have to know what you're looking at. Even something as small as a phone charger can hide components that are still in perfect working condition. And the best part is, it's basically free if you're salvaging from scraps. Well, some people might wonder, is it really worth the time? And my answer is yes. Think about it. Capacitors, resistors, diodes, transformers, USB ports, connectors, and MOSFETs. These parts add up if you're buying them brand new. But here I am pulling them out at zero cost. And a lot of them are better quality than the cheap components sold in some markets. Plus, salvaging teaches you more than just collecting parts. You actually get to understand how the circuits were designed and what each piece was doing in its original device. And don't even get me started on old PCBs. These boards are gold mines, literally and figuratively. You can pull out ceramic capacitors, electrolytic capacitors, relays, transistors, USB ports, headers, crystals, inductors, LEDs, switches, and even heat sinks. Some boards have mini transformers, ferrite cores, and sometimes really nice screw terminals that you can reuse in other projects. Once you get the hang of it, you will start to recognize components just by the way they're soldered in or the part of the circuit they're sitting in. You know, a lot of beginners think they need to start electronics with big money. Buying two kits, full component assortments, and even brand new boards. But the truth is, most successful DIY builders started with scraps. I've built power supplies, chargers, and little inverters, and testing circuits, and even LED drivers, and even uh, mini amplifiers, all using parts salvaged from old gadgets. When you see the potential in these scraps, you stop worrying about cost. Right now, while I'm working through these boards, you might notice I'm not rushing. Salvaging isn't something you do in a hurry if you actually want to keep the components in good condition. Some parts pop right off. Some take a little heat and others you just store with the board until you need them. And trust me, you'll always end up needing something you saved months ago. When you open up a phone charger, for example, you're looking at a tiny power supply system. Even though it looks small, it's got a full AC to DC conversion circuit in there. You'll often find a step-down transformer, some high voltage and low voltage capacitors, a fuse, and maybe a rectifier diode or a bridge rectifier, some resistors used for feedback or startup circuits, and usually, a little controller IC. Sometimes there's even an optocoupler hiding in there for isolation. You see, people throw this in the trash without realizing how much value is packed into such a small plastic case. Another thing I like about salvaging is that you learn repair skills naturally. When you disorder a part, you understand why it was placed in that part of the board. You see how the traces connect different sections, like the input filtering, the rectification, the smoothing, the regulation, and the output. You can look at a burn capacitor and immediately know that it failed because of high ripple current or voltage stress. You're not just collecting parts, you're learning real electronics without even thinking about it. And so guys, if you're enjoying this video, do us a favor by hitting that like button and also don't forget to subscribe. And let's not forget the environmental side. Each board I salvage from is one less piece of e-waste sitting in a landfill. A lot of these materials don't degrade properly and can leak toxic stuff into the soil and water. By reusing these components, I'm not only saving money, I'm also reducing waste and giving these parts a second life. 
It's like recycling, but smarter. You know what's funny? Some of the best quality components I've ever used came from devices that were completely dead. The board was burnt or the casing was broken, but half the components were still perfect. For example, the transformers you pull from quality phone chargers are way better than the no-name ones you buy from stores today. And resistors. Those things almost never die unless the whole circuit went up in flames. Another reason salvaging is great is because you build up a collection over time. Right now, while I'm pulling from these boards, I know these parts are going straight into my organized storage. Later, when I'm building something, I don't have to run to the market or place an order. I just dig into my collection and find exactly what I need. That saves so much time and it lets you experiment more freely. And let me just say this, if you're learning electronics, salvaging gives you hands-on training that test books can't. When you pull out a diode and see the marking, you learn to identify it. When you take out a capacitor, you start recognizing the difference between 16 volt electrolytics, 400 volt capacitors, ceramic disc capacitors, and SMD ones. Even the little stuffs like tactile switches and LED indicators, once you salvage them a few times, they'll become familiar. Let's talk a bit about the cost side again. If I walk into a store right now and try to buy components, let's say a transformer, some capacitors, resistors, a bridge rectifier, a USB port, and a transistor. I am spending money on every single one of those, but here I am salvaging them for free from something that someone threw away without a second thought. When you add it all up over time, salvaging probably saves you hundreds of dollars, even thousands depending on how active you are with electronics. There is always something satisfying about giving new life to old technology. Like this charger, once it powered someone's phone, and now parts of it will end up in another project. It's like extracting potential instead of letting it go to waste. People buy phone chargers all the time, and when one stops working or the cord breaks, they just toss it. But inside, the transformer is still good, the capacitor is still good, and the diode is still good. And all that is going into my parts bin. Now, something a lot of people don't realize is that some salvage parts are actually more durable than modern cheap parts. Older electronics were often built with higher quality standards, because manufacturers expected devices to last. So resistors have better tolerance, capacitors have better endurance, and even the solder joints are stronger. You also get inspiration from the things you salvage. For example, when you open up a charger and see how they kept everything compact and isolated, you start understanding design techniques. You learn how to arrange components physically on a PCB, how much clearance is needed between high voltage and low voltage areas, and why some parts are glued down to prevent vibration. While I'm going through these boards right now, I am spotting things I know I'll use soon. Small rectifier diodes, little step down transformers, MOSFETs, ferrite beads, even wire coils. And one thing I always look out for is connectors. You can never have too many connectors. USB ports, barrel jacks, screw terminals, pin headers, these things are so useful when you're building prototypes. Another advantage is creativity. When you salvage parts, you don't feel restricted. You don't say, I can't build this because I don't have that component. Instead, you say, let me check my salvage parts and see what I can improvise with. That's how some of the best inventions start. Not with brand new components, but with whatever you have available. Sometimes, while I'm salvaging, I come across a component I may not recognize immediately. Instead of tossing it aside, I keep it, check the number online later, or test it with a multimeter. That's how you grow your knowledge. It's like a free electronics education built into the process. I also appreciate that salvaging builds patience and attention to detail. Whether you're using a soldering iron, a hot air gun, or just snipping off parts carefully, you're learning control. And sometimes you realize a part is worth keeping, not just because it works, but because it's rare or expensive to buy. Now, for anyone watching who thinks they need fancy equipment to salvage, you don't. You can start with basic tools and upgrade as you go. All you need at first is a screwdriver, a pair of pliers, and maybe a soldering iron, and you're set. The more you collect, the more you want to organize your parts, label your bins, and build your own little workshop. I also want to mention the satisfaction that comes later when you're building a circuit, and you can say, Oh yeah, I pulled this capacitor from a dead board. Or this USB port came from an old charger I opened months ago. There's a kind of pride in that. It's not just convenience, it's resourcefulness. A lot of people don't realize how many projects they can start just from salvage parts. 
Phone charger transformers can be used in low power supplies, adapters, LED lighting projects, touch circuits, and even DIY chargers for other devices. Capacitors can be used in power filters, audio circuits, trimming circuits, you name it. Resistors can be used anywhere. And MOSFETs are gold for switching and power control. And small ICs from chargers can even be repurposed in custom power modules. While I'm working through these boards right now, I am also thinking about reorganization. It's one thing to salvage, but it's another thing to store correctly. I like to keep all my similar parts grouped, like capacitors in one place, all resistors in another, all connectors together. That way, when I need something, I'm not digging through random piles. And let me say this, if you're not planning to build something immediately, salvaging keeps you prepared. There will always be a moment where you need a part unexpectedly, and you'll be glad you saved it. It's like having a hardware store in your own space. For anyone who's just getting into this, don't underestimate the value of small parts. Those little SMD resistors and capacitors might look hard to use, but once you start experimenting, you realize how helpful they can be. And parts like coils and inductors, people overlook those. But they're very useful in power circuits and filters. And while I'm here pulling from this phone charger and these PCBs, I'm not wasting anything. Even the wires can be reused. The casing can sometimes be repurposed. And if there are any screws or metal clips, I save those too. Even small things add up when you're a builder. Another thing I like about this process is that it keeps me sharp. Every time I salvage, I'm identifying components, thinking about their ratings, and considering future uses. It keeps my mind in electronics mode, even if I'm not working on a specific project at the moment. And honestly, it's just fun. There's something enjoyable about cracking something open and discovering what's inside. It's like treasure hunting for tech people. And every board is different. Sometimes you get lucky and find something rare. So while I keep going through these boards and this charger, just know this isn't just random pulling of parts. It's a skill, and it's one that pays off over time. Whether you're into DIY, inventing, repairing, prototyping, or just learning, salvaging gives you an advantage. And the more you do it, the better you get. You start to recognize good boards from bad ones. You learn which devices are worth opening and which ones you can skip. You get faster at removing parts without damaging them, and you build confidence. So yeah, while I'm here salvaging away, I'm not just collecting junk. I'm filling up my inventory, saving money, protecting the environment, and sharpening my electronic knowledge all at the same time. And if you're watching this and thinking about starting, trust me, just pick up one board and try. Once you see how much value is inside, you will never look at scrap the same way again. And that's gonna be it for today's video. If you enjoyed watching and learned something new, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Stay creative and stay safe. And also don't forget, there's gonna be another video where I turn scraps into very useful gadgets.